The ongoing open war on Amharis didn't start overnight. It is the culmination of nearly a century of anti-Amhara propaganda since the 1935 Italian invasion. Beginning in the 1960s, the new ethnic rebels and elites have continued this legacy, portraying Amhara as a strategic adversary and center stage of their struggle. As witnessed over time, when these groups, from the TPLF to the current Oromo Prosperity Abiy Ahmed government, gain power, they translate and institutionalize their anti-Amhara bias and hatred into policies and public discourses. This has had severe impacts on the Amhara people. We would present facts and figures that are hard to argue with, offering just a glimpse of what the Amhara have endured and continue to experience. Think of it as the tip of the iceberg. Remember, numbers speak volumes. We also invite researchers and scholars to dig deeper and expose these glaring injustices. This is the first in a series exploring the injustices and impact of hatred on the Amhara people. And we will bring you more in upcoming informative documentaries. In Ethiopia, according to official government censuses and projections from international organizations, no other ethnic group has experienced as significant a population decline over the past five decades as the Amharas. Millions of Amharas are unaccounted for, either intentionally undercounted, victims of structural violence, or compelled to change their ethnicity due to fear or the severe neglect of the region, has made it the poorest among all regions, profoundly affecting fertility and mortality rates. The impact of this decline has brought far-reaching social, political and economic implications. The economic, political and demographic disenfranchisement of the Amhara community began in 1991 with the ascension of the Tigray People Liberation Front to power. Since 2018, under Abiy Ahmed and the Oromo Prosperity Party, this disenfranchisement and hostility has escalated exponentially. Let's analyse the demographic changes over the past 40 years, using data sourced exclusively from official government records. In the 1984 population census, the Oromo accounted for 29.1% of Ethiopia's population, followed closely by the Amhara at 28.3%, with a difference of 0.8% or 332,414 people. The 1994 census, the first conducted under the TPLF-led government, the Oromo population had risen to 35%, while the Amhara population had decreased to 25.9%. The population difference between the two groups then surged to 5 million. In the 2007 census, the Oromo population accounted for 36.7% of the total population, while the Amhara decreased to 23.3%. This disparity widened to nearly 10 million, or 13.4%. In the 2024 projection, the difference between the two groups widened to nearly 14 million. From 1984 to 2007, the Oromo population changed from 29.1% in 1984 to 35% in 1994 to 36.7% in 2007. In contrast, the Amhara population consistently declined from 28.3% in 1984 to 25.9% in 1994 to 23.3% in 2007 and is projected to be around 22% in 2024. In 2007, over 2.4 million Amharas were missing from the projected birth rate. Tigray People's Liberation Front, TPLF officials, were unable to explain to Parliament how or why, with some even daring to suggest HIV, despite the Amhara people being known for their conservatism and strong family values, some attributed this to severe systemic marginalization that made the region the poorest and least developed in Ethiopia. Others pointed to forced sterilization of Amhara women under the TPLF Ministry of Health or the current WHO chief Tedros Adhanom. Whatever the reason may be, there must be answers to how such a large number of people seemingly vanished. Over the last 40 years, the population gap between the Oromo and Amhara has starkly widened from 332,414 to 14 million by 2024, heavily favoring the Oromo. 
This profound shift carries immense social, political and economic ramifications. Both peoples live in similar conditions, yet the reasons behind this staggering demographic change remain unclear and demand answers. The socio-economic consequences of demographic change are profound. Population size directly impacts budget allocations and parliamentary representation. Amharas, who are drastically underrepresented, receive far lower budgets despite facing extreme poverty and unlivable conditions. The Tigray People's Liberation Front, TPLF, war in 2020, destroyed over 8,000 schools and 3,000 hospitals, health posts and centres, along with many universities and schools ransacked. This has left millions of Amharas living in misery. For nearly a year, the Oromo Prosperity-led government has waged an open war on Amharas. This continual assault will inevitably reduce the number of Amharas, resulting in even less economic support and representation. The global community must question how such a drastic reduction in the Amhara population occurred over four decades. Whether it is due to undercounting, inability to reproduce, disease or high mortality rates, the impact on Amharas is severe and demands thorough investigation and resolution.